is called The Gift of the Magi by O. Henry, and it was written in, uh, in America in 1905, so it's a very old story. And it's a story basically about Christmas. <coughs> One dollar and 87 cents. That was all. And the next day would be Christmas. There was clearly nothing left to do but to flop down on the shabby little couch and weep. Della finished crying. That was all the money she had to buy her husband Jim a present. She'd been saving every penny she could for months. Many a happy hour she'd spent planning for something fine and worthy and rare for him. Suddenly, she whirled from the window and stood before the mirror. Her eyes were shining brightly, but her face had lost its color within 20 seconds. Rapidly, she pulled down her hair and let it fall to its full length. Now. There were two possessions of the James Dillingham Youngs, of which they were both mighty proud. One was Jim's gold watch that had been his father's and his grandfather's. The other was Della's hair. So now Della's beautiful hair fell about her rippling and shining like a cascade of black brown waters. It reached below her knee and made almost a dress for her. Then she did it up again, nervously and quickly. Once she faltered, just for a minute, and stood still, while a tear or two splashed on the worn carpet. On went her old brown jacket, on went her old brown hat, and out she went down to the street. She stopped where the sign read, Madame Sofroni, hair goods of all kinds. Will you buy my hair? Asked Ella. Take your hair off and let's have a side of the looks of it, said Madame Sofroni. Down rippled the black brown cascade. Twenty dollars, said Madame, lifting the mass with a practiced hand. Give it to me quick, said Della. The next two hours tripped by on rosy wings. I'll wait for that to go away. <laughs> the next two hours tripped by on rosy wings. She ransacked the stores for Jim's present. She found it at last. It had been made for Jim and no one else. It was a simple platinum watch fob. As soon as she saw it, she knew that it must be Jim's. Twenty-one dollars they took from her for it, and she hurried home with a fob and 87 cents. When Della reached home, her joy gave way to anxiety. What should she do with what was left of her hair? In half an hour, her head was covered with tiny, close-lying curls that made her look wonderfully like a truant schoolboy. If Jim doesn't kill me, she said to herself, before he takes a second look at me, he'll say I look like a Coney Island chorus girl. Please, God, make him think I'm still pretty. Seven o'clock. Jim was never late. The door opened and in he stepped. His eyes fixed upon Della. And there was an expression in them that she could not read, and, uh, and it terrified her. It was not anger, nor surprise, nor disapproval, nor horror. <coughs> he just stared. Jim, darling, <coughs> she cried, don't look at me that way. I had my hair cut off, and I sold it because I couldn't have lived through Christmas without giving you a present. It'll grow out again. You won't mind, will you? I, I just had to do it. My hair grows awfully fast. Say Merry Christmas, Jim, and let's be happy. You don't know what a beautiful gift I've got for you. You've cut off your hair? Cut it off and sold it. Don't you like me just as well, anyhow? I mean, I'm me without my hair, ain't I? It is Christmas Eve. Be good to me, for it went for you. Maybe the hairs of my head were numbered 
but nobody could ever count my love for you. Jim embraced his Della. He then took a package from his overcoat pocket and threw it upon the table. Don't make any mistake about me, Del. I don't think there's anything in the way of a haircut that could make me like my girl any less. But if you'll unwrap that present, you may see why, why you had me going there for a while. Nimble fingers tore at the string and paper. And then an ecstatic scream of joy was instantly replaced with hysterical tears. Jim had to embrace Della for a second time. For there lay the combs. The set Della had worshipped forever in a Broadway window. The beautiful, expensive combs, pure tortoiseshell, were hers. But the tresses that should have adorned the coveted combs were gone. But she hugged them to her breast. And at length, she was able to look up with dim eyes and a smile and say, My hair grows so fast, Jim. And then, Della leapt up. Jim had not yet seen his beautiful present. She held it out to him eagerly upon her open palm. The dull, precious metal seemed to flash with a reflection of her bright and ardent spirit. Isn't it dandy, Jim? I hunted all over town to find it. You'll have to look at the time a hundred times a day now. Give me your watch. I want to see how it looks on it. Instead of obeying, Jim tumbled down on the couch, put his hands under the back of his head, and smiled. <laughs> Del, let's put our Christmas presents away and keep them for a while. They're just too nice to use at present. I sold the watch to get the money to buy your combs. Now, the Magi, as you know, were wise men. Wonderfully wise men who brought gifts to the babe in the manger. They invented the art of giving Christmas presents. Being wise, their gifts were no doubt wise ones. And here I have told you of two foolish children who most unwisely sacrificed for each other the greatest treasures of their house. But in a last word to the wise of today, let it be said that of all who give gifts, these two were the wisest. They are the Magi. Thank you. Sleep well, everybody. I'll be joining you. And God bless. Thank you. Have a great night. Thank you. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, please.